Hello, everyone. This is Edward Tamiz. I'm one of the six board of directors of Internet Infidels, and I'm a library author on the piece on hard determinism, and I'm on their kiosk editorial review committee as well. And today, I'm going to be interviewing the legendary video game composer Grant Kirkhope, and to give a brief introduction to this excellent gentleman, Grant is a BAFTA-nominated British composer who has created the soundtrack for video games that have sold in excess of 30 million copies, from Mario Plus, Rabbitus, Kingdom Battle, to Ghostbusters, to GoldenEye, to Banjo Kazooie, Viva Piñata, to Donkey Kong, Kingdom Hearts, or sorry, Kingdoms of Amular, Reckoning to Civilization Beyond Earth, and Perfect Dark, to Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Grant is equally at home with live orchestra as well as electronic source scores having written music for both mediums through his throughout his 22 year career in 2017 grant scored mario plus rabid's kingdom battle for ubisoft and is the first western composer to compose for the nintendo legend in 2016 it turned out to be one of grant's busiest years most notably grant was asked to compose music for the feature film the king's daughter starring pierce brosnan william hurt and kaya scodelorao due for release in 2017. He also scored music for video games, Ghostbusters, for Activision, Yuka Lely for Platonic Games, who raised a record-breaking $3.2 million via Kickstarter for the project, and Drop Zone for Sparky Pants Studios. Grant's score for VB and Piñata was nominated by BAFTA in the original score category in its 2007 awards. And uh, Grant was nominated in the 2016 ASCAP Composer's Choice Awards for his work on Civilization Beyond Earth Rising Tide, and was also nominated for Best Original Score for the Video Game or Interactive Media in 2016 from the International Film Music Critics Association for the same score. Civilization Beyond Earth Rising Tide was also nominated for Best Score, Video Game, and the Q Awards 2016. His score for the feature film Shadows won Best Score at the Silicon Beach Film Festival in 2020. Grant is represented by the Gorfane Swartz Agency by Andrew Zach, and he has a degree in music from the Royal Northern College of Music, where he majored in classical trumpet and lives in Los Angeles, California, with his wife and two children. And uh, to start with our first question, so what new projects are you currently working on right now? So there's always things that you can't talk about, but um, I can talk about, well, I can mention that I'm working on Mario Rabbids um, Sparks of Hope, which is the sequel to the Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle game. Awesome. Sounds good. All righty. And then, oh, no, yeah, I guess also I should mention also that some of that information is a bit out of date. So the King's Daughter is just, is just coming out this week. It's taken years to get that out. So that's actually in, in theatres uh, this Friday, actually, in Regal Theatres. Sweet. Uh, so that's uh, that's finally out. And the Shadows, the movie, is going to be out this March, I think, or this May, one of the two. Awesome. That sounds exciting. All righty. And then for our other question, um, how is it like composing with Rare? Uh, what are some of your uh, best moments with them? Well, it's just, it's just great fun, right? I think when you get to, to be with a team where you all get along and have lots of fun together, that you, it's, it's, you can't fail to be inspired and write good stuff, you know, whether you're an artist or a programmer or whatever, or a musician or a you know, sound designer. I feel like um, those are just really great times for me. I spent 12 years at Rare and I loved every minute. Um, mm -hmm. So it's one of those, um, you know, you look back and you just think you're so lucky to be there. It's just one of those lightning in the bottle moments, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That sounds good. All righty. And then um, I also wanted to talk with you today about uh, the composition process for Banjo-Kazooie. So how did that go? Did the game developer give you like a, a like a beta version of the game and you played it and then you decided what music would go, you know, with the level or did they give you like artwork? How did that go? So I was a staff composer then, so I was actually with the team. So I saw what they were making on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So mm -hmm. I could just I could just wander down the corridor and look at look at the artwork or watch what was see what was going on. So it was very, very hands-on. Um, I, I was you know I was on the game from the day it started to the day it finished, right? Uh -huh. uh, these days, as a contract composer like I am now, you're often brought in later or halfway through or near the end or it could the start could be anywhere. So um, with Banjo, I think it was my first game where I did all, all the sound by myself, so all the music and all the sound effects. So it was, um, you know, it was a kind of me trying to prove myself that I could do the job, right? Because I hadn't been at Rare very long. I hadn't done Goldeneye before that, really. And only, only music, not sound effects. So, um, yeah, it was a kind of a big, it was my, my moment to try and prove that I was 
Do, did the right job hiring me, right? Not firing me. <laughs> All righty. Sounds good. That's cool. And then, um, so um, what do you know of any more secrets in Banjo Kazooie besides the uh, uh, the eventually revealed? Um, I think it was the um, the egg, that, like the other eggs with the question marks on them and the ice key. You know, if there was any other secrets in the game you could get besides those. I don't think so. I think I, th- I think the game's been so you know intensely investigated over the years. I think everybody's found everything everything there is to find. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that was a pretty fun game. Yeah, and I remember, like, uh, one of my best parts was when you were playing the uh, Gruntilda's trivia, you know, where you have, like, the little blocks, and each time you go on the block, there's, like, a question. And, like, right. The questions were, like, you know, how many uh, knives are in the uh, the chef's kitchen in the <laughs> ship in Rusty Bucket Bay? It's yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was, that was cool, yeah. And, yeah, so that, that was, like, my um, my, one of my best experiences from playing the game. And just to comment on, like, video game secrets, um, I remember someone was telling me about, like, alleged secrets in video games. But, like, the secrets were, like, uh, secrets that people made up just to mess with people. But it would, like, be telling them to do things that were, like, ridiculously hard. Like, um, I remember in Killer Instinct 1, someone was like, um, if you beat the game on the hardest level without losing, a z- without losing any lives, you'll get a secret ending. And I remember playing with Combo, like, for like uh, six months and i finally got it where i beat like idol at like the hardest level and i was like oh my god i did it and like i was waiting for the secret ending and it didn't come up. i was like oh my god <laughs> like, it, it pissed me off and like i was reading like some i know it, it's just like and it's just so frustrating like as a kid it's like i guess someone just made this crap up i'm like oh right. my god and yeah. then there was, I know, and there was like uh, other secrets that people made up. I know, I think when like the second Tomb Raider came out, they were like, um, if you beat the game without getting hit once, you get to see like Laura Croft nude in your new playthrough. And I know I remember reading like old posts where like people were just being frustrated, like, oh, what, what happened? I did everything. I'm sure I didn't get it. It was just like, I know it was, it was crazy. So like, <laughs> there's all those kinds of things where like people would just like make up stuff and like it wouldn't actually be a secret in the game just to mess right. with people. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All righty. And then um, for our final question, um, what um, composition uh, tools or programs do you use uh, nowadays to compose? And uh, has it made things significantly easier than, say, like programs you would use maybe 15 years beforehand? So I use Pro Tools these days. Oh, okay. I, used to, I used to use Cubase when I was at Rare. And I kind of feel like all the doors in the digital audio workstations are all they're all good, and they all just they all do pretty much the same thing. It's just the the one that you like the best. So I, you know that kind of thing. So I, I'm just with Pro Tools now because I used it years ago. Um, I feel like because we get to use these great huge sample libraries now and big orchestral libraries and all the huge synthesizers and all that kind of stuff. There's so much choice that I feel like every medium's got its its drawbacks. Like with an orchestra, when you're doing orchestra stuff, you spend your time trying to make it not sound like a computer play it a bit out of time, a bit out of tune to make it sound like human beings. And then, which is te- which takes time, but you've got a very finite palette, right? You've only got, um, you know, uh, strings, brass, woodwind, percussion, that's it, right? That's all you've got. So it's, there's less to choose from. But when you when you write sort of synthesizing music or electronic music, you know, you spend three hours searching through 8,000 bass sounds trying to find a sound you like oh, on a synthesizer, yeah. you know, and you can play it perfectly in time so you don't worry about that, but you've just got so much choice. So I sometimes feel like, having so much choice and so much stuff can slow you down. Where back in the old days, you had such limited choice, you just got to get on with it and make the best of it, right? So um, I feel like everything's got its drawbacks and pluses somewhere. Awesome, that sounds good. And uh, like nowadays when you do composition, do you do like, um, do you do like putting it in the grid where it's like the notes are perfectly in line, like the eighth notes are like doot, doot, doot. Or are you just so like, do you just like compose and like, oh, that sounds accurate enough in so far as the time, or do you still like, yeah, so when I, when I do the orchestral stuff, I try, I try to, to make it sound a little bit out of time. So it sounds oh, like okay. human beings, right? Oh, when, you do, okay. when, when you do synthesizer stuff, it can be perfectly in time because people expect it. But um, for live orchestra, well, when you use sample libraries like orchestral sample libraries, you want to try and make it sound like a human being. And oh, so okay. you put in breath points for the flute players and the brass players when take a breath and don't just have one long line with no gaps because human beings can't do that, right? you got to play a bit, take a breath, play a bit, take a breath, right? So, yeah, 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 so, you know, all that stuff makes it sound like human beings. Yeah, yeah. I remember I graduated with a degree in composition um, from the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. And I remember, like, a lot of uh, young composers, they'd have, they'd have things in finale, 
And they like listened to him so much. They were used to hearing a perfect performance. And when they would give it to like, say a pianist or an ensemble, you know, they're going to play it in perfectly. And they would get so mad and be like, it's not exactly as I intended it, but it's like, you can't have like unrealistic expectations. Cause it's like a computer is going to play it perfectly, you know? So it's like, yeah, I know. And also, you got to get used to that. Yeah. I think the classic mistake is people take a, for instance, a, a French horn ensemble patch, which is supposed to be a unison. You play a tune that's like, got four French horns in it, right? So you play uh -huh. a single line tune. People take the four horns and play a chord. So you got four horns in each notes. So you got you got a triad. You got like twelve horns playing that. Like you never yeah. get twelve horns in symphony orchestra. You might get four or six if you're lucky. You know. So and then they, they go to record with an orchestra and they can't understand why the horns don't sound massive because there's only four guys sat there and they're used yeah. to hearing sixteen or twenty four or whatever because they've got umpteen chords with, with, with the ensemble patch. So. I think there's kind of mistakes to be made there. Yeah, I gotcha, gotcha. All right, and then one more bonus question. What do you think of Richard da Jacks, the composer? You, you like know what? Stuff? I don't really know much of his stuff, right? I know he's very good. Um, he's just got done that game that got a lot of awards, hasn't he? The uh, Guardian of the Galaxy, is it? I think he's just done that, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but honestly, I've, I've, I've never met him. I don't know the guy. Uh, but I know he's you know, he's won lots of awards and he's, 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 he's popular, so... I'm, I'm I'm sure he's fantastic. I've just never heard him. Awesome, awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, talking with him about composition. So that was interesting. All righty. So uh, sounds good. Uh, so that's all the questions I have. Uh, thank you very much for the interview, sir, making time for me. And uh, just to close off, uh, did you have any uh, final thoughts? Want to promote yourself? Tell people how they can get in touch with you, you know, make donations, or you can – the floor is yours. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just on, on at Grant Kirkup on Twitter. I think I'm at Grant Kirkup Composer on, on, on Instagram. You know, I'm, at, I'm most places. I'm, I think I'm on TikTok somewhere too, and I never really use it. Too old for that. Um, but um, you no, know, yeah, yeah. The King's Daughter's coming out this week, this Friday. So if, you, if, it's, if you're close to a regal theatre, go and see it. Awesome. Sounds good. All righty. Well, thank you very much for this interview, sir. And in a couple of minutes, I'll have this downloaded and I'll give it to you if you want to share it or not. It's up to you. But I'll give you, I always give the people I interview a copy of the interview. So. Sure. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. Alrighty, thank you very much, sir. Bye. Bye.